guidance and strength. But suddenly, in the latter part of the 20th century, belief in God seems old-fashioned and out of date. Some even consider God dead. Can God survive in a world in which money reigns and technology promises to save us all? This week on The World Tomorrow, we'll answer the question, where is God in the 20th century? On the world tomorrow, Richard Ames. Have you ever wondered, does God exist? And if he does, is he alive and active in world affairs today? I want to answer these questions on today's program, Where is God in the 20th Century? For some people today, the concept of a personal God who takes an interest in individual human beings seems foolish and absurd. In ages past, man believed the earth was the center of the universe, the heart of God's creation, and the focal point of his interest. It didn't seem illogical for man to presume he occupied an important place in the eyes of God. But in our 20th century, the relative insignificance of the earth within the context of the complex universe has become painfully evident. The modern science of astronomy has revealed the vastness of our universe. A universe containing thousands of millions of galaxies, each with untold thousands of millions of stars. This realization of the awesome magnitude and magnificence of the cosmos has caused some to question whether a god, if indeed one exists, would ever concern himself with infinitesimal bits of earthly matter such as we seemingly of little consequence in the vast cosmic scheme of things. Such thoughts have had a profound effect on modern religious attitudes, especially in our highly sophisticated Western society. I have here the results of a survey in which people were asked the question, how important is God in your life? The survey was conducted in 24 different nations, including many countries where the world tomorrow is broadcast. The results of this survey are very revealing. People were asked to rate on a scale of 1 to 10 how important God is to them in their lives. A 10 shows God is very important. The people of the Mediterranean island of Malta scored highest with 9.58. Next was Mexico, followed by Chile. Fourth was South Africa, where both the white and black populations felt God was important in their lives. The United States was fifth with 8.21. Canadians scored 7.36, and Australians a 6.22. With the exception of the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland, the countries of Europe had a lower rating. Italy averaged 6.96, then followed Spain, Finland, Belgium, Britain, West Germany, Norway, the Netherlands, France, Denmark. At the bottom of the list was Sweden, with a rating of only 3.99. This survey of 24 nations plainly shows that while there are some few countries who rate their relationship with God as important, there are multiple millions of people worldwide who will admit that God doesn't play a very important part in their lives here in this 20th century. Now, they may believe God exists, but they don't want much to do with him on a day-to-day -day basis. And surprisingly, this is the case even among many Christian professing nations of the Western world. There are probably hundreds of thousands of people viewing this program today who do believe that God exists. But for some reason, he seems remote, far off, unreal. Many of you watching today would probably like to know how to make God more real, more significant in your life. I don't mean just to have some sentimental good feeling about God. I mean how in this 20th century, God can become a real, vital force in your life so that you feel you know him in his true nature so that when you pray, you get answers. You know where he is and what his purpose is for your life. Perhaps it's not surprising that God has become less important to many people in this modern, sophisticated 20th century as compared to those who lived in less complex times. When we think of Western Europe in the Middle Ages, 
We often think of the great cathedrals which symbolized man's worship of God with reverence, fear, along with superstition and myth. These architectural masterpieces took generations to build and inspired a sense of awe and reverence for all who saw them. But today, those same cathedrals are dwarfed by the massive skyscrapers of our modern secular society. Like the skyscrapers that dwarf the cathedrals, high technology seems to have dwarfed God as mankind once viewed him. Perhaps it's because science and technology seem to have been able to solve many of the problems that only a couple hundred years ago, men had to face simply with faith. Today, meteorologists can predict the onslaught of hurricanes and typhoons. And with advanced warning, many lives can be saved. Medical science and disease control centers strive to prevent and control disease epidemics. So naturally, it's not surprising that God and religion play a minor role in our lives today. God, or at least the traditional view of God, seems irrelevant in the modern world. Is God, to put it bluntly, out of date in the 20th century? Even among those who do believe in God, there's much confusion as to what he's like. A leading American religious magazine published this surprising statement. The doctrine of God is a confused area in Western theology. Each of its three departments, the divine attributes, the trinity, and God's relation to the world is disputed territory. What an amazing admission that the doctrine of God is a confused area of Western theology and that it's disputed territory. It seems that even some theologians who spend their lifetime studying God and religion have difficulty reaching a common definition of what God is like. Perhaps it isn't surprising that the average man or woman on the street would find God a bit unreal and not quite relevant to our everyday life and needs. But you don't need to be confused. You really can know the true God. There is a source, a book whose author claims that he's the true God. That book is the Bible. And in this book are some surprising revelations about what God is like, who he is, and what he's really accomplishing with mankind on earth. The Bible plainly tells us that God doesn't have to be a mystery. You can personally come to know who he is. In Deuteronomy 4, and verse 29, it states, You will find him if you seek him with all your heart and with all your soul. So why has humanity such difficulty in understanding the truth about God? The answer is that when God tells us about himself, people don't listen. Let me state that once again. The reason mankind has such difficulty in understanding the truth of God is that when God tells us about himself, people do not listen. Now, does that surprise you? Let's take a look at a few examples in the Bible. God first revealed himself to man in the Garden of Eden. Though modern critics have dismissed it as myth and legend, understanding what happened in the Garden of Eden is fundamental to understanding what is going on in our world today. You know the story. When Adam and Eve decided to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, even though God had specifically told them not to eat of it, they said, in effect, we will decide for ourselves what we will do and how we will live. They rejected further revelation from God. Let's look at what happened after Adam and Eve disobeyed God by taking the forbidden fruit in Genesis 3 and verse 8. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Notice it wasn't God who hid himself from the first man and woman. It was they who hid themselves from God. By their conduct, they rejected an active relationship with God. Over 2,000 years later, God once again began to reveal his way of life, this time to the people of Israel whom he led out of bondage from Egypt. But the people of Israel didn't want to hear from God directly. They said to Moses in Exodus 20 and verse 19, You speak with us that we will hear, but let not God speak with us lest we die. They asked Moses to come between them and God. But even then, they chose to ignore the commandments and instructions that came from God through Moses. And even later on, as a nation in the Promised Land, they continued to defy God's commandments and became as idolatrous as the pagan nations around them. Second Kings, the 17th chapter, records the account. For so it was that the children of Israel had sinned against the Lord their God. They left all the commandments of the Lord their God made for themselves a molded image and two calves, 
made a wooden image and worshipped all the hosts of heaven and served Baal. The ancient nation of Israel had an opportunity to know God and develop a closer relationship with him, but they went after other gods. Then centuries later, God sent the Messiah, Jesus Christ, with a message to mankind. He came to reveal more about the family of God, including vital information about his Father in heaven. When the disciples wanted to know more about the Father and what he was like, Jesus said in John 14 and verse 9, He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? During his time on earth, Jesus set an example of what God the Father is like, how he behaves, thinks, acts, and what he expects of us. But what happened? Once again, human beings rejected revelation of the true God. They crucified Jesus Christ. And so today, humanity continues to reject knowledge of the true God. Many believe modern technology has now replaced God as the savior of mankind. Yes, science is standing on the threshold of exciting discoveries regarding the origin of the universe and the nature of matter. But nothing that has been discovered in the past, nor anything that is discovered in the future, should shake our faith or diminish our belief in the real God. The Bible tells us that the vastness and the complexity of the universe should demonstrate the existence of God. The Apostle Paul wrote in Romans 1 and verse 20, for since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Yes, even the very creation and universe about us reveal the power and character of the true God. But man has always chosen to reject him. And that's one reason why God is not real to us in the 20th century. God, however, has revealed himself to humanity over the millennia, and he still does today through his awesome creation and through the pages of your Bible. Now, to give you a better understanding of how you can establish a personal relationship with God, we'd like to offer you this free booklet entitled, Is God Real to You? It'll give you insight into the very nature of God. This booklet contains three major sections, including the lead article, Why God is Not Real to Most People. This article asks and answers questions such as, what is the source of your religion? Why does God seem unreal? And does God exist? I know you'll find this booklet very helpful and encouraging. So be sure to request your free copy of this informative booklet, Is God Real to You? Along with this booklet, we'll also be sending you, if you're not already a subscriber, a free subscription to the Plain Truth magazine. The Plain Truth magazine is one of the world's most outstanding magazines. And it shows how the Bible is relevant in solving the problems of today's modern society. Now, all of our literature is free of charge without any cost or obligation. I'll be offering them again at the end of today's program. Now, let's continue to see how God can become more real to you. As I said in the first part of this World Tomorrow program, one of the reasons mankind still doesn't understand God is that we've always turned away from him when he's revealed himself to us. That does not mean that God is weak and desperately wanting our attention. In this age of space exploration, God is not afraid that his control is diminishing as man becomes more advanced in technical knowledge. He has purposely adopted a hands-off policy to allow us to learn certain lessons because humanity seems determined to learn these lessons the hard way. Ironically, it's this so-called advanced industrial 20th century generation that is going to find out that we need God more than any other society in history. But you and I don't have to learn the hard way. We can learn to seek him and find out about him. We don't have to remain ignorant that he exists. Where is God in the 20th century? Dozens of scriptures show that God is on his throne in heaven, and through the Holy Spirit, he is omnipresent everywhere. You know, the Apostle Paul in the New Testament times encountered people not too much different from many of us today. Just under 2,000 years ago, the Apostle Paul toured the Greek city of Athens. For the first time, he preached to the Athenians the true gospel. The city was very intellectual and religious, or at least it thought it was. But like so many people today, 
The ancient Athenians did not have a clear concept of who or what God really was. And so they built temples and shrines to every god imaginable. As Paul stood on Mars Hill, also known as the Areopagus, he noticed that one particular altar was dedicated to the unknown god. He used this as the basis of a sermon. It's recorded in Acts 17, beginning in verse 22. Men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are very religious. For as I was passing through and considering the objects of your worship, I even found an altar with this inscription, to the unknown god. You see, this altar to the unknown god was an admission that there might be a god whose identity had not been revealed to them. Paul then said, Therefore, the one whom you worship without knowing, him I proclaim to you. Listen to what Paul said to the Athenians. He was describing a god that men didn't know then and still don't know today. Verse 24. God who made the world and everything in it, since he is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands, nor is he worshipped with men's hands, as though he needed anything, since he gives to all life, breath, and all things. Paul states that God created all nations of men. For what purpose? So that they should seek the Lord in the hope that they might grope for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. Yes, the Athenians were told to seek the true God, and so we're told today. Paul, in verse 29, went on to warn the Athenians not to create false ideas or images of God. Therefore, since we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the divine nature is like gold or silver or stone, something shaped by art or man's devising. Perhaps we pride ourselves in the 20th century that we don't worship gods of gold, silver, or stone as the Athenians did. But is that true? Today, many in the Western world worship or serve, among other things, cars, electronic consumer goods, clothing styles. Others make false gods out of literal gold, silver, precious metals, jewels, and currency in its many forms. Still others serve their false gods through drug abuse, drunkenness, gambling, lying, cheating, and violence. Yes, our modern 20th century has gods of material wealth, status, and power. To millions of people, material possessions have become more important than God. This world, its lifestyle, its materialism, and its priorities have come between us and God so that he's no longer the most important thing in our lives. We need to admit that to ourselves and seriously consider what the Apostle Paul told the Athenians in Acts 17 and verse 30. Truly, these times of ignorance God overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to repent. That same command is just as valid today as it was then. But what does it mean to repent? It means to change from our selfish, lawless way of living. It means to quit worshiping the false gods of this world and begin seeking the true God. It's not God who has lost touch with us. We have lost touch with him. The Nobel Prize winning author, Alexander Solzhenitsyn, wrote this about our 20th century. If I were called upon to identify the principal trait of the entire 20th century, I would be unable to find anything more precise than to reflect once again on how we have lost touch with our Creator. God is still powerfully able to help us in this 20th century, but it is we who have lost touch with our Creator. But the good news is God will not totally abandon man to his fate. He has never done that. He has never changed his mind about us. But first, we must learn that our way, living a life contrary to God's laws and commandments, bring only misery and destruction. And this 20th century world is writing the history of that very painful lesson. Just look around you. Crises are mounting rapidly in the world today. In the geopolitical arena, forces are even now impelling mankind toward a crisis unparalleled in human history. Despite current peacemaking efforts, world events will continue to move in new and perilous directions. Unprecedented global problems are fast overwhelming the capacity of governments to deal with them. Among them, pollution, 
the poisoning of our atmosphere and ocean. Climatic disruption, accompanied by agricultural disasters and famine. And dread new disease epidemics, such as AIDS. The big question of the 1990s will be that of human survival. The Bible tells us there is coming a time when only the intervention of the Creator God, the real God that man has always rejected, will save humanity from utter destruction. But you can be spared through these difficult times to come. God is able to protect those who seek Him. You can personally come to know the real God, the true God, as He really is, and make Him the central focus of your life now. We can call upon God and seek Him. That's the first step. But notice there's a condition. Isaiah 55 and verse 7. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, and he will have mercy on him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. This verse is the key to why God doesn't seem real to many today. To know God, you must obey Him. Take him at his word, study that word, and do what it says. As Jesus said in Matthew 4 and verse 4, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Most people are not willing to do that, because that involves changing, altering one's lifestyle, according to what God expects of you, and not what you always want to do. But if you do repent and turn your life in the right direction, he says he will bless you. In the book of Hebrews, the Apostle Paul wrote in chapter 11 and verse 6, For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Many other scriptures show that when we seek God, we must seek him with our whole heart. That has always been the way to get to know the true God, and it's just as valid today in the so-called advanced 20th century. There are no shortcuts. God gives us hundreds of promises in the Bible, and he will answer our prayers if we're willing to do what he says. In 1 John 3, in verse 22, And whatever we ask, we receive from him, because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. You need to be willing to seek the true God and make some wholehearted changes in your life. God still answers prayer. He still inspires, guides, and leads those who seek him wholeheartedly not those who simply rate him on a scale of 1 to 10, but those who seek him 100%. God will not take second place to anything or anyone. Your relationship to him must be the most important fact of your life. Then, and only then, will everything else fall into place, and you can begin to learn and grow and understand more than you ever dreamed possible. To help you begin to understand these things, I'd like to offer you this week's free literature. This informative booklet is God Real to You and the Plain Truth Magazine. First, let me show you this booklet is God Real to You. It tells you more about the true nature of God as described in the Bible. It shows you how you can communicate with him and communicate in a way that gets results. This booklet contains three major sections. The lead article, Why God is Not Real to Most People, explains why God seems so remote and distant to many, including those who claim to believe in God. Doesn't it make sense that our Creator God would reveal to mankind the knowledge of the purpose of life and the laws governing it? This section, God Still Answers Prayers Today, makes clear that God is concerned for your personal problems now. Yes, even your own personal difficulties and pressures and worries. God is willing to help us with our trials of unemployment, ill health, the death of a loved one, and other serious problems. And he also wants us to experience success and happiness in life. It is possible to pray in such a way that your prayers will be listened to and answered by the God in heaven. This section, Me Read the Bible, shows the importance of regular Bible study in coming to know the true God, who he is, what he's like, what he expects from us, and what he promises in return. God is revealed in the pages of the Bible. And even if you've never opened a Bible before, this section explains how to go about studying God's Word. You'll find this booklet, Is God Real to You?, one of the most informative and helpful booklets we've ever offered on this program. Now, we've nothing to sell on the World Tomorrow program, 
All of our literature is yours, free for the asking, no cost and no obligation whatsoever. We're simply not going to ask you for money. Thanks for being with us today. I'm Richard Ames for The World Tomorrow. The preceding program and all literature were produced and sponsored by the Worldwide Church of God. Thank you.